This month's episode of Firebase Release Notes is coming to you live from the Firebase Summit in New York. It was a treat to meet with so many developers in person again. But we had a lot of product updates. And here's my top five takeaways from the Firebase Summit. First up is Firestore, where we have removed the hard limits for write throughput and concurrent active connections to better support your app's growth through large traffic spikes. And as your database grows, some content is about to get outdated. Or you know, you might have policies around data retention that require you to delete data after a certain period. Firestore's Time to Live or TTL policies auto remove such expired content and are now generally available. And we've added a count operation to the Firestore API, which gives you the ability to perform cost-efficient, scalable count aggregations. So you can now get just the count of the results for a query or an entire collection without retrieving all of the documents. If you use cloud storage through Firebase, you should also use its server-side security rules to ensure that only authorized users can access the files. These security rules for storage can now access values in Firestore with the new firestore.get and firestore.exists functions. This makes it much easier to build flexible rules to protect access to stored files without repeating logic in both Firestore and Cloud Storage. Instead, you write everyone's access level or roles to Firestore, and then you access them from your Cloud Storage security rules too. Firebase extensions are pre-packaged bundles of code that add core features to your app, and we've just launched three new ones. With the Vonage extension, you can provide customer support by using video chat. The May Search extension makes it easy to search for documents in Firestore, and the Purchasely extension makes it simple to integrate in-app payments. And check out our brand new extensions.dev marketplace to discover all of the Firebase extensions, because we keep adding new ones all the time. And if you sign up for the Extensions Provider Alpha program, you can start building and publishing your own extensions to the marketplace for use in your own future apps or maybe even by other developers. So sign up on extensions.dev today. On Apple platforms, Crashlytics uses DSIM files to turn the addresses in crash reports into readable stack traces that you can map back to your code. When your app is missing a required DSIM file, you can now be notified via email, Slack, Jira, or PagerDuty. And you can even create your own alerting logic through Cloud Functions and EventArc. We're also launching Crashlytics support for Flutter apps that are built using the split debug info option. This is a recommended build option that can dramatically reduce the size of your applications, giving your end users the best possible experience while you still get fully symbolicated stack traces in Crashlytics. And the App Quality Insights window in Android Studio helps you discover, investigate, and reproduce issues reported by Crashlytics without ever leaving your IDE. This window has now graduated to the beta channel of Android Studio, and we added many features like the ability to filter issues by playtrack, Integration with Crashlytics' signals about important issues and keeping notes with crashes to let your team know how your fix is progressing. One way to deliver the best experience for each of your users is to customize your app for their individual preferences and behavior. But uh, publishing a separate version of your app for each of your users may be a bit too much. Remote Config can automatically deliver an optimized experience for each of your users by using the power of Google's machine learning. With this personalization feature, you provide the configuration data that defines the different experiences in your app. You then specify what type of event or value you'd like to optimize for, and Remote Config takes it from there, applying the right personalized configuration for each of your users. See, I told you we had a lot of updates at Firebase Summit, so check the blog post that I'll link below for even more updates, or check the video replay that I also linked. Now, if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel below. Now, I'm going back to answering questions here at the summit, and I'll see you in a future episode of Firebase Release Notes.